What is the perfect commercial aircraft? Is it a long-haul 600-seater like the Airbus A380, or is it the smaller 100-seater narrowbody like the Boeing 737 MAX? Well kids, grab your pencils because today we're going to sit down and design the perfect aircraft. Hey, it's Nick here from Found and Explained. If you like planes and other tech things too, then you'll love this channel and I invite you to subscribe. Let's get into the video. This video will be a little bit different from my others in that we're going to be designing the perfect aircraft together. What do I mean? Well, imagine we're making a new company called Found and Explained Aerospace and we're going to go head to head with Airbus and Boeing in the commercial space market. This means we need to make the perfect plane that not only passengers will love, but will also win the hearts and wallets of our airline customers. So how will a non-engineer and his family of subscribers on the internet build an aircraft? Easy, through answering several questions. Let's begin. Question one, passenger capacity. The first question we need to ask ourselves is what is the most popular passenger configuration? If you're new to planes, you might think that bigger is better, like the famous Boeing 747 or the double-decker A380. However, this could be further from the truth. The two most popular aircraft currently available in the world are the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. There are many variants of the type that we won't go into detail today, but we have seen a trend of these aircraft becoming bigger over time, reaching towards a passenger capacity of around 200 to 230 passengers. Thus, we could rightly suggest that our perfect plane should comfortably seat 200 to 250 passengers in either two-class cabin or a 250 in an all-economy cabin. The passengers will be seated in a staggered 1-1, then 2-2 configuration in business class, just like what's found on JetBlue with its Mint business class, 2-2 in premium economy, and 3-3 in normal economy. The aircraft will be big enough to be profitable on such routes as Los Angeles to San Francisco, but small enough to fill up compared to more expensive, long-haul aircraft. Question 2 range. Let's talk about range. As mentioned before, the best-selling aircraft have a range on average of around 4,000 nautical miles. Our perfect aircraft is going to push that and fly around 5,000 nautical miles, enough to open up routes from London to Cancun, Singapore to Istanbul, and Los Angeles to Tokyo. But this aircraft won't be designed for hub-to-hub -hub travel, but rather from small airports to small airports. This means flights from cities like Boston to Helecreon, Greece, or Sydney to Sri Lanka, routes that don't make much economical sense for large flag carriers, but could easily be incredibly profitable for cunning, low-cost operators or smaller national carriers. The third question will be narrow body or wide body. Speaking of economics, we need to discuss the difference between a narrow body plane and a wide body aircraft. A wide body aircraft characterized by its twin aisles has more passenger seats and is more comfortable for long haul flights and can carry more cargo. Typically wide body aircraft are the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A330. A narrow-body aircraft has a single aisle and is more fuel-efficient than the A330, but is more cramped and not that suitable for long-haul flying. There are some ways to combine these two types together, like I explained in my previous video about the Boeing 7M7, however, for our purpose we'll only go with one, the cheaper to operate narrow-body. Sure, it won't be comfortable, but passengers won't mind because of the low ticket price. It will be quieter and be more environmentally friendly as well. Oh, and it goes without question that this aircraft will only have two engines, as a four-engine aircraft burns way too much fuel for our purpose. And I would love to say that it also flies as fast as a Concorde, but thanks to supersonic laws, we have to fly slow and steady at normal aircraft speeds. 
Now, question four, we need to discuss cargo and cargo capacity. The cargo capacity question is a little bit tricky. If we go with a narrow body choice we just made, we are going to severely limit the cargo capacity of the aircraft as the hold will not be able to take LD3 containers. That being said, we will offer a cargo version of the aircraft with a tail door. It is important that the aircraft's tail opens like the Boeing 747 nose door so cargo can be loaded in quickly and without having to perform a 90 degree turn. So the last question, number five, who will buy this plane? This aircraft will target the transatlantic and Asian Pacific markets for low cost carriers to compete against flag carriers and make international travel cheaper. As it's designed for long thin routes, we will finally see highly profitable low cost carrier base itself off this aircraft. Of course, this plane is going to have plenty of disadvantages. For one, the passengers are going to hate the tighter conditions on board, but they will find that the seat width will be wider than on average than on a wide body aircraft with a 3-3-3 configuration. With a premium economy cabin, passengers who don't want to share their row can sit together, and economy is not dissimilar from that found on a 737 or A320. One of the issues will be turnaround time with the plane taking longer to turn around than its small 737 competitors, which may make it unsuitable for short haul routes. There is also the question of the cabin crew rest times and how meal service will be conducted with a single aisle. There will have to be a blanked out section for the cabin crew to fly long haul routes and plenty of bathrooms on board that can be accessed by different cabins. You might be watching this video and thinking that all of this sounds awfully familiar. And that's because it is. This is essentially the same aircraft as the popular Boeing 757, which back when it was in production, sold over a thousand units. Today, there is no aircraft under production quite like it. And if it was built, I think we could easily see orders for at least a thousand units. And this video might be closer to the truth. Back in May of this year, Boeing was reportedly working on a Boeing 757 Plus aircraft based on the 757-200, which they would quickly bring to market to rival the success of the Airbus A321 XLR. Alas, the current market conditions have slowed such an idea. What do you think? What changes would you make? And what would be your perfect plane? I can't wait to read your comments, so write them down below and I'll answer every one. And if you enjoyed this little opinion video, then subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.